Hey everyone, and welcome back to Life at Leeds with me, GWFM. Uh, first of all, if you can't tell, my voice sounds different. Uh, I've been full of cold, and it's one of the reasons why I didn't have an upload over the weekend. Because it's on the mend at the minute. It's been absolutely shattered over the weekend. Probably didn't help that I went out and played football as well, and was screaming abuse at uh, my teammates and one of you. But uh, yeah, we're going to try and get a, a video done here. Um, just going to go straight into what's been happening. And um, First of all, uh, we did miss Marcus Anderson for the next game against Burton Albion. Uh, and we're going to go into the highlights now as to what happened. So yeah, indeed in the uh, Burton Albion game, we did actually have a quite easy comprehensive victory, complete with a clean sheet. Uh, we won 3-0 thanks to goals from Unino Kane, Suleiman Dakara, uh, and Tillman to carry again, getting a brace. Uh, and as you can see in the match stats, uh, 20 shots to their 40, 11 shots on target, and to their one, which it was just very much a very dominant display here. Some very good performances indeed from Dakara and O'Kane, but some also notable ones from uh, Aileen, uh, Charlie Taylor playing well at 7.9, and yeah, overall it's a very pleasing performance. Following this game though, um, and bear in mind that Aileen has been doing really well. Gitano Berardi um, wanted to discuss his lack of first team football. It didn't go well. It has been a little while, but I, I vaguely remember that he he wants to leave basically now. I've been trying to offer him out. Um, I tried getting Brick up to step in and uh, chin, the, chin, the, chin the twat, but it didn't quite work. It's a shame because in real life he's a really good player. He's just been really inconsistent with injuries um, and basically he can't stay fit. And I'm not joking, he's come back. He's played literally two games, played well in one, played terrible in another. I put Aileen back inside and he's kicked off. I'm not just going to rush you in, am I? Come on, you've been, you've been injured for Christ's sake. And I said that and he says, I know my own body. I remember it now. But anyway, moving on. Worth noting that we did actually win an award for a, in, a, in a month. Well, it wasn't me, but it was Alex Moore and his goal against um, Wigan Athletic. Uh, I think you might have seen it on the highlights, but I'll show it again. Um, and as you can see, he gets it here, uh, just outside the area. It rifles it from 35 yards out or so. Um, fantastic goal. It's what he's capable of, as you can see in the intro. Uh, it's him that's actually scoring the worldie. And then following on with that, we got the board confidence update on the 1st of November. And as it turns out, uh, Salino is delighted with us. So, I can't be happier really, but I'm not surprised. We're fourth in the league at this point. So yeah, uh, I can't see any reason why not. The only thing that's bad is the has gone. But uh, his performance in the Scarlet Championship has been a, a particular highlight. And moving on to the financial page, uh, we have lost half a million pounds this month, but we're still easily in the in the uh, in the black, if you like, or white in this case. Uh, nearly eight and a half million in the in the bank. Obviously, we haven't got anywhere near as much as that to spend. I think there might still be about four hundred grand uh, transfer um, money left over. Um, but yeah, it's we won't get to see any of that probably until next season. We then followed up uh, the Burton game with a disappointing 2-1 defeat um, against Norwich away at Carrow Road. And unfortunately, I mean, we took it. We had a brilliant start. Went one 0 up after two minutes thanks to Chris Wood, and then Cameron Jerome popped up with two goals in five minutes. And by 15 minutes, all the goals were scored. And if memory serves me correctly, I don't think there was another highlight after that, after their second goal. It was absolutely dire. Uh, another thing to mention is that we did pick up an injury to a key player. Uh, Unan O'Kane will be out for two months, unfortunately, uh, with strained knee ligaments. So that sucks a massive dick. And then worth knowing that just before the game against Newcastle, Thielen uh, picked up a, a damaged neck after straining for the ball in training. Uh, so that's someone else I'm missing, but again, he's not scoring, so he's not a massive loss. Um, but I, I was hoping he was going to try and pick up. He's got quite a few assists, to be fair to him. He's got five assists. So he does do a bit of a job, but he just needs to start scoring. Yeah, so now you can just see basically just in full, like the whole shebang, basically. Um, obviously, we, we, we beat Burton 3 0, and Norwich, we lost 2 1 away. Unfortunately, we couldn't replicate what happened in real life. So, as a result, the table looks like this. Um, we are 5th in the league, 28 points. 9 points behind Norwich, thanks to their victory. They were top of the league when they played us. 
if Newcastle beat us today, they will go 10 points clear of us as well. So the automatic spots start to look a little bit less likely and it'd be more focused on the playoffs. Uh, hopefully we can get a victory today and bring ourselves to within four points of Newcastle. Um, and if Wolves win, four points to them as well. Um, I'm hoping for a decent performance. We are at home. It's going to be a packed out crowd. In real life, it's going to be a sellout, which is, uh, which is great news for us. Uh, let's just see what we can do. So Newcastle United as a team, as you can see, they have the legend that is Rafa Benitez at the helm. Obviously the place, St. James's Park, capacity of 52,404. It's a brilliant stadium, it's a brilliant club. I, I, I do like Newcastle to be fair, I do like the Geordies. Um, obviously the, the, the chairman I think might be still a bit of a clown. I know he was a clown at one point and everyone wanted him out. I don't know if it's still the case. Uh, they seem to be doing very well and I've got Rafa Benitez. And speaking of Rafa Benitez, look at those attributes for him. He's, he's just, he's probably one of the best keep, best keepers, one of the best managers in the Premier League, let alone the Championship. What he's doing at a Championship club, I've no idea, which obviously he is there in real life. But, you know, kudos to him. You know, the best managers, you, you, you think, oh, you know, I'd like to see you do get like a, I don't know, a Chef Wednesday up or something like that, you know, in the lower league. No disrespect to Chef Wednesday because I wasn't going to say Leeds, but that's what I'm trying to do. However, moving on to his captain, I think it's a bit of a strange choice. He's gone for Jamal Lachelles. Lachelles? I think it's Lachelles. Uh, used to play for Nottingham Forest. Um, and he, he's, he looks good, but I don't think he looks amazing. And his leadership is only 12, which is why I'm saying say it's a bit odd. And it's, it is the guy that he, is, he has picked in real life as well. But if you look at his vice captain, which is Jesus Games, or Jesus, Jesus Games, Jesus Games, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, but look at his leadership, 18. He'd be a more like apt choice, I think. Um, I know he only joined in the, in the summer, like, but even so, with leadership sk uh, skills like that, you'd think he'd be well in the room. Uh, experienced player, of course. He looks very strong mental. And, uh, yeah, technically he's not bad neither. So he's one definitely to look out for with making overlapping runs. And Matt Ritchie is the key man, which strikes me as a bit odd. Uh, he's not the quickest. He's not amazing. His best attributes are natural fitness, work rate and long shots, which, yeah, I suppose they are very good attributes to have. He's a four and a half star player coming to us. Again, without being fantastic, he's good. He's probably an edge on very good. But it's just, it's just the fact he doesn't have a lot of pace. And their form of late, you can have a look here. There's a couple of games where they've conceded some goals, but they get a hell of a lot of clean sheets. As you can see, I can count there easily about seven, just without even counting. I think there's actually eight. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a very tough game. Um, so let us get into said game and see who we're, who we're going to line up with. So we're going to line up, uh, there's been a couple of injury returnees in Hadisako and Kamar Roof. Kamar Roof is going to get a start today, but we'll go into it from the back. We're going to go Silvestri in goal. Uh, you might remember it, me complaining about Green against Wolves. Uh, well, Silvestri's been playing since and he's been doing alright. Uh, Ailing right back, Taylor left back, Janssen and Bartley continue in the middle of defence. Pablo Hernandez continues on the right hand side with Roof on the left. Uh, Phillips and Bridcut start in the middle of the park with Wooden Dakara up top to spearhead the attack. Today's game is brought to you live from Ellen Road. It's Leeds United FC against Newcastle United FC. Right, so what I'm going to do here for the team talk, I've already done it, is I'm going to certainly tell them nobody expects us to get a result today. Just go out there, enjoy playing football without any pressure. Uh, the massive underdogs today are the uh, boys in white. But fortunately, we've already beaten them once, so we, we should have the better of them, really, in my opinion. Whether that's the case well, remains to be seen. Um, but we've beaten 5-2, if you remember, so let's hope for a similar result. But I'm also going to assertively say I've got faith in them, and what a result that I've got there. Nearly a sea of green, as Lokidoki would say. Let's get to the game, come on! Alright, so the teams are lining up, warming up, ready to kick off. Let's see what we can do here. Gale gets the game underway. Newcastle going from left to right. Here's Hames. Or Games even. Just giving some early encouragement. It's a long ball from Roof. It's found wood. It's a fantastic ball. He plays it square to Dakara. He's got options left and right. Fans Hernandez. Oh, it's a good shot. But saves. Saves it. That potential highlight here. Games gets it away. 
Gale somehow beats Bartley, but Bartley robs him of the ball. Fires Wood! Wood's one on one to keeper! Shot scores! Pretty wide! Devastation. Corner though. And Phillips is going to take it, swings it high into the box, headed away by John Joe Shelby with his big bald head. Hernandez though, jogging back and plays it all the way back to Silvestri. Dress all in yellow today. What can he do? Smashes it long downfield towards the, the Duke. He loses out to Hanley. Now Atsu on the left hand side. Cutting in field. It's a fantastic tackle for Hernandez. I might be joking because it's going to be a red card. Straight red as well. Looking at it. It looks a nasty challenge to be fair. And Oh, it's in on the yellow. I thought that's why. I thought that was what the highlight was going to be then. I'll take that. What he's done there is take him up at team as you'd say. Here is the big bald bastard which is Shelvy. That's Diame. Finds Ayose. Slip ball, great tackle from Brickup. It's far, far its way to Atsu, skips past both of them. Now it's Gale again, plays it wide. It's a great ball to game. Gamez, I did highlight him in the beginning of the game. And Gale has put it away from point blank range. 30 seconds before the break. Disappointing, it has to be said. Great ball out wide, to be fair. I did highlight him making the run. First time ball and... Bartley just nowhere near him. 1-0 Newcastle. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something different to uh, the advice. The advice is to say not, you've not been good enough. Uh, make sure we understand the disappointment. I'm going to say they've been unlucky. Try and keep morale up because... I don't know. I, I think we have been unlucky really. Um, I'm hoping that keeping the spirits up will help. I mean I've got to see a green there so I can't see why that's a bad thing. So and one other thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually take a little bit of... Uh, I'm going to call it advice. He did mention it in the comments. Adam Pearson said that he used a very similar tactic to this. Uh, the exception to change the, the uh, deep line forward that Wood was occupying into a target man. So I'm going to give it a go in the second half and see if it can make any difference. Because he has played Port uh, otherwise. Got a 6.4 rating. Let's see how he fares. Right, so we get the game back underway. No. Wood has it now. Roof. Plays it forward to Dakara. Overlapping run. Hernandez, he has got an overlap and run from Malin's time, but he's not decided to go for it. He's decided to leave it and let Atsu get to it easily. Lazar. Squares it to Hanley, who sit downfield, and Atsu does pick it up in a little pocket of space in the midfield area. But yeah, he's just skipped past everyone that couldn't even there, but fortunately, he's put it wide. Right, I've made two changes. I'm bringing Stuart Dellas on for Chris Wood. Chris Wood has come off. Roof's gone up top. Uh, changed to a deep line forward again, because that made no difference whatsoever with the target man. Hadi Sacco's going to come for his first appearance since his long injury um, and he's going to replace Pablo Hernandez who, he, who is on the yellow card so that's why I've taken him off. Right, instant highlight and looking at this. Uh, Lazar has it, squares it to Shelby. Anita finds a Yose, long ball forward for Gale to get in behind. He is behind, took both of them and chips it into the top left hand corner. That for me is game over. It's very disappointing. Yeah, just got in behind then. Bartley and Pontus Janssen, far too slow. Pretty sure that ball was morphed through Sylvester from that angle. But oh well. Alright, so this is going to be final change 10 minutes ago. I just aggressively told him to show some passion and nothing's happened. Uh, so we're about to demand more. Uh, but Alex Moat is going to come on for Calvin Phillips. Uh, hopefully to try and get us, give us a bit more creativity. Maybe a long shot. So a late push we're going to be looking for here. Right, is there... Well, is there one last twist? Maybe for a consolation goal? I mean, I can't be too disappointed. Newcastle are top side. They pre predicted to finish in the top two. Uh, it's between them and Norwich who finishes top. Um, it's just a bit of a shame. Uh, Alien was offside there, but it's going to go in. No, maybe not. Well, there's the final whistle. 2-0 defeat. The most concerning thing is we're not scoring goals. I mean, we created enough chances there. We created more than Newcastle. But it was a disappointing performance and I am going to tell them that as well. Because it was. Uh, I tried being, you know, giving it benefit of doubt at half time. And it didn't work. It came back to bite me in the ass. But as you can see, twice as many chances in both regards. And they've had two shots on target. Maybe I should have gone with green. But I don't know. I'm still on my eye arse about him. So as a result now, as you can see, we're in sixth position. Joint on points with uh, it switching Birmingham City and Cardiff City. Um, but we're still in the playoffs. We've got to take the positives from it. Uh, negatives are we've lost the last two and the bounce. Um, positives are we're still in the playoffs. And we know we're not getting tumped by teams. You know, 3 and 4 nil like some teams have. Um, 
we need to get some goal scoring done. Um, January is coming up. Feeling hasn't really done it done it for us this season. I'm thinking maybe I might have to change some personnel somewhere. Uh, maybe get another striker in because that seems to be where we're lacking at this moment in time. So that brings us to our next game, which it might seem like a long way away. I've highlighted it. Aston Villa away from home. You know, I was saying, gee, why don't you play Aston Villa at home? And put that as your life because it's only two games away. Um, but also, it also takes us right up to the last day before the transfer window, so it'll give us a clear indication of where we're going to be in the table and where we do need to strengthen. Hopefully we can start scoring some goals again, um, because we've had a couple of results recently where we haven't scored a goal. Um, so I'm hoping to try and rectify that. If not, I might have to dip into the transfer market, maybe sell someone. Um, I did mention about selling it okay at the beginning of the season. He has been playing really well for us, and it is, he is a big loss. And he is missing for two months, but he might be there or thereabouts ready to be sold at some stage. Um, all depends how the other players progress in the next five or six matches. Um, but yeah, we're going to go Aston Villa. Because um, it's another big team. It's another of the relegated sides. Um, got a lot of history, of course. Been in the Premier League a hell of a long time uh, up until this season. Um, yeah, just be, be an interesting game, I, I'd like to think. So that is it, guys. Um, as always, thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed, why not press that like button. If you'd like to see more, feel free to subscribe. And also, thank you to everyone who has subscribed recently. It's massively appreciated. Uh, I don't know how you found us. It'd be nice to know in the comments if you like, want to let us know. Did you find us during the FM Scout videos that I made? Um, regarding like the tutorials, why to pick leads regarding when I used FM16 at the end. Or any other way, how, how did you come across us? It'd be nice to know in the comments. Try and leave one in the, below. It'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, but yeah, until next time, I'll see you for the Aston Villa game. Until then, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.